I'm Chris, we're at the Gentleman Bread Club. Get my hair cut by Charlie today. All right, Bray. So what we're going to be doing with this haircut is we're going to be doing a 0.5 skin fade, and we're going to take it with a light zero around the edges just to make it that bit neater. We're then with the top, we're going to do pompadour. So we're going to have like a nice tight parting on the left, and all the hair is going to come backwards, slightly to the right. Let's do this. So what I'm doing, I'm going to put in my baseline. So with the beard, I want it in, I'm going to go in with a cutthroat razor, make it nice and pointed. So what I'm going to start off with the fade, is initially put it into that point, take my line in line with the temple. And I'm going to flip my clippers over and put in a faint line around the head. As I, weigh, as I make my way around the head, I'm going to slowly dip down to go around the occipital bone and then make my way back up again. This is only a faint line, so it doesn't need to be perfectly straight. So now, now that I've got my rough line, I just follow up to it. These are the uh, just the, the wall uh, training clip, basically training clippers, the standard clippers, using a just a wall 0.5 guard, going over with my my uh, Jack Dean fade brush, just to tidy up the hairs as I go along. Say was skin fade or was just a zero? Uh, this is going to be a, a skin fade, but uh, we're only going to use the zero around the very edges. We don't want to go too short. And here we're at the beard again. Oh man, leave that like that. Just leave it there, yeah? Yeah, on that side, <laughs> just one side. Create a new trend. Uh, I hear they're all doing it in Milan, so we'll just do what Milan's doing. So now I'm just going to swap over, swap it to my one guard and fully open it. So it's now a 0.5. And I'm just going to flick, flick at the line. So I'm not holding it flat. If I was holding it flat, it would be a 0.5. But I'm not. I'm holding it like a 90 degree and I'm just flicking it. What this does is it makes it that just a slight bit longer than that initial 0.5. And it flicks it up, making the hairs longer. So what I'm doing now is I've just swapped back to my 0.5 guard, but instead of it being fully open, so that's, that's closed, that's open, I'm now closed just at slightly and I'm now flicking out where that 0.5 line was, where I initially drilled in like that. So now I know that my 0.5 line was there. I've now blended it out with this grade one and a half and this 0.5, there's like a one in the middle. Now I'm going to get my wall comb and do some clipper over comb. So I'm going to hold my hair out at an angle and I'm just going to clipper it off. What this technique basically does is that it allows me to freely blend out that one and a half. Because I know that that flat to the head is a grade one. So the more I tilt it out, the longer the hair is going to get.
this uh, actually this technique that I'm actually using right now, I actually picked up me and the, the barber behind me, Craig. We actually did a week away in Rotterdam. There's a barber shop over there called Skordum. And uh, yeah, translate scumbags. But uh, they're a pretty sweet barber shop. And uh, they're basically, the majority of the haircuts they taught us, they taught us to do with clipper overcomb. So you see like at the bottom I did guards, whereas they would have just held it flat and just ride it all the way to the top. So I've taken their technique and I've taken other techniques and I've just mixed them together. Only because that's the way it suits me. What I like to do now is that there is, I can see, some blemishes, some lines, some faint lines in here. What I like to do is just get on my 0.5 guard, fully closed, and just rub at it. So what I've done now is that what I'm left with now is like to me it's going to be the longest part of the fade. This very this weight line around here. So I'm just going to go out with the scissors, doing scissor overcomb and just blending my way out. I'm going to use the fine side of the comb. Actually, this is the first time I've come across this technique. Oh really? Yeah, man. Basically, I, I just feel like the uh, scissors give a bit more of a softer edge in the clippers. We're filming guys next to Now my fiance is a bit deeper. So now that I've scissor blend, scissor overcomb the rest, there's still a faint weight line that I've left actually. So I've scissor cut the gap from there to there, just to blend it together. And as you can see, there's still hair here. I've left that longer because when I unclip this, see, I'm going to want this hair to be longer so that when I scissor cut these both together, it has some hair to sit on and it actually blends in with the fade nicely. This is where his parting's going to be. And what I like to do with the crown is I like to cut it to how it naturally wants to sit, how it naturally forms. Got a really crown well. Yeah, <laughs> you do a strong crown. Because the crown's sitting here, and where that hair is that I left longer, which is there, when I pull it out all together, you can see that's where the hair is. That's the shortest point. You can see it's gradually getting longer. That means I just need to cut this hair to match match up with it. Now it will nicely blend together. So that's why I left that bit just a little bit longer. Hey man, you're right. Yeah. Why are they big? Oh. So as I cut the top, I'm actually leaving this far left side longer than the right because this hair needs to stretch over and cut, sit around at the back. So if I take my new section here, I'm getting quite close to the front of the hairline. So I'm going to want to start over directing it, pulling it backwards. So this hair here, this is where I left it longer when I was scissor cutting. And I'm pulling it backwards because it's going to be sitting backwards. So now I'm going to follow that line and just cut up. Comb it again from a new section. That's where the line is. And I'm going to want to follow it. And gradually make that line longer and longer. Yeah. <laughs> 
Give, give the camera what? Austin Powers trivia. Austin Powers trivia. So this section I've taken it. I'm just lightly point cutting it. So I just want to add some texture. Take a little bit more length off, just so it blends in that little bit more. Further section up. So this is a, a Rusel brand. So it's, a, it's actually a product from the barber shop I was telling you about earlier. Scorum. It's their product. No, but what, what is it? Ah, oh, it's a grooming tonic. Okay, grooming tonic. Put it in the hair when it's wet. Then when you dry it off, gives it a level of hold, some texture, and it will hold its shape. It's a little bit like. A liquidized wax really that's how I try to explain it so when I dry it in it solidify with the hair go dry the part in down so I can see I can see where that weight line is and I'm gonna see that I need to go through that with the blending shears same again so now this is the crown so I want to dry it to how it naturally wants to be pushing the brush in reverse. So normally to pick up the hair, to pick up the hair, I'd go like that. But his hair's too short because I've cut it in to blend in with the rest. So I'm actually gonna reverse. What that does is it just smooths the hair, hair cuticle, just smooths it over. The hair's getting a little bit longer now because I'm getting towards that other side. So I'm gonna now start picking. I'm cool, bro. What we're gonna do is that weight line that I said I left, just to blend in the hair. And I've got my blending shears. And I'm just gonna go over that line. Yeah. These are A1s, uh, shears. Oh yeah, I've got, got to have that oil slick. That oil slick color. Sweet. Now, lovely. Now let's just get rid of those neck hairs, sharpen up the beard, and we're good. Go out the wall detailers. Just gonna follow the hairline. I actually take the hairline back just a slight bit, just so it looks a bit more fuller. Get rid of these neck hairs. I mean, these beard hairs even.
we're pretty much getting to the uh, finishing touches of the haircut now. So what I've done is I've just done a straight square neck line. We taper our necks at Jones and Riggs. So I've made this straight line so I know where I need to go over with my zero. And that will just fade it right out. I'm just flicking out where I went over with the detailers. It's just a fade out into the skin. This is now some elegance gel. Where these neck hairs are, I'm now just going to go over it with a cutthroat razor. And then we're going to be nice and smooth and clean. So what I'm using here, some Layrite natural cream. I just like to rub it in the roots. Don't worry about styling it just yet. Just make sure you get that product in there. As long as you work it into those roots, it will hold up the rest of the hair for the rest of the cut. If you put the product in the ends, it's just going to weigh it down. If you rub it in those roots, it's actually going to hold it. So now that the products are in there, just grab my wall comb while I'm out. I'm going to use that at an angle and just rake, rake through it. And there we are, man. Sorted. 0.5 fade into a pompadour. <laughs> Cutthroat razor. I can see where his beard was lined up before. It's just all these little hairs there. Use my hand as a guard. So I know I'm not going to slice up my hand. <laughs> and I'll also use it to pull the skin down and get some, make the skin quite taut. Happy? Yeah, it was good. Charlie did an excellent job, as usual. <laughs>to the end of the video go ahead and treat yourself to some fine beard brand products over on our shop if you're not already a subscriber be sure to do that and finally keep on watching some more of our awesome videos